Hello and welcome to this exercise on handling data in which we take in uh, things like uh, re relative frequency, uh, bar charts, histogram, uh, frequency polygon and lastly cumulative frequency. Uh, we should also look at how to find an estimate for the mean and the median and also estimate for the mode as well. Okay, so I have to apologize for this. Uh, I can't do much about that. I can't, I can't get rid of that. Right, okay, now here's what we got. Now, this is real life. This is uh, the number of uh, teach male and female teachers in state school in England. I mean, this is real life. I could have made life easier for myself by looking at uh, information from a textbook, but this is more interesting, I think. Okay, now this tells us that there are 258.6 thousand women teachers in England, state schools in England, and there are 106.6 thousand uh, men teachers in English schools and then when you add those two you get that now there's a, there's a little bit of discrepancy here about 0.3 or so but you'll expect that because you you round up and round down so you, you know this sort of thing you get but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much now the other thing is here we've got relative frequency there okay as well as the absolute values there and Life is so much easier when you plot graphs of relative frequency against years as opposed to absolute values. Now, this is telling us that uh, the women in this class group contribute 5.2% of the overall teaching population. Okay, And that the men in this class group contribute 1.1% of all the teaching population, because if you divide 4.0 by 3.6, 5.5, you get about 1.1%. Okay? Right. Now, this also tells us that this group as a whole contributes 6.3% of the overall teaching population. I hope that makes sense. Right. Now, moving on, and what I've done, because I've not got enough space here to uh, put in every class interval. So what I've done, I've put this, I've called these classes in terms of A, B, and C. So that would be our class A group, and then class B and class C. It's nothing to do with drugs, by the way. So class D and class E, class F, class G, class H, and class I there. Right. Now, this is what we got. And this, this is time to practice your lower bound and upper bound um, topic. Now for class A, the lower bound value is 19.5 years. Okay. And the upper bound value for class A is 24.5 years. For class B, the lower bound value is 24.5 years and the upper bound is 29.5 years. For class C, similar thing again, 29.5 and 4.5. And so we get on until we get to class I, where the lower band is 59.5 years and the upper band is 64.5 years. Okay, hope that makes sense. Right, now, firstly, we're going to look at the, look at bar charts. Now, in bar charts, we, we look at comparing categories. Okay, so we compare male to female in each class interval and it's not distribution, which is a bit different. That's histogram here. So in bar chart, we're looking at the uh, categories. So uh, women and female in each class uh, interval there. All right, okay. Now, for the for class A, which is between 19.5 and 24.5, uh, we've got 5.2% uh, of female and 1.1% of male, which is down here somewhere. And for male, we've got 1.1%. And what is saying to us is that in this group here, this one here, the proportion of male teachers in this group is 17.5%. Okay? Because if you divide 1.1 by 6.3, that's what you get there. You get 17.5% there. And in the same group, we say that the ratio of female teachers to male teachers is 5 to 1. Because if you divide 5.2 by 1.1, you get about 5 to 1 there. That's what you get. Okay? So we're looking at categories here. Yeah? We're comparing male, sorry, comparing female 
to men here. Okay, it's not distribution, which which that's what you get in histograms there. And also in bar charts, you got gaps between your uh, intervals there. So there's a gap between uh, class A and class B. You got a gap there. Again, the same calculation that tested that for this class interval, men contribute 23 percent. There are 23 percent men in this class between the ages of 24 and a half to 29 and a half years old. Now, the three percent of those are men, and the ratio of men, sorry, of female to men is 3.3 to 1. It's about 33 female teachers to 10 uh, male teachers. That's what we got there. Okay. And so, and so we, we get on. So that's what we got. Uh, same calculation again. You got a proportion of 9.2% uh, of male teachers in class C. Uh, and the ratio of male of female teachers to male teachers is about 2.4 to 1 or 24. Female teachers to 10 male teachers there. So we carry on. So in effect, what you're looking at, we're looking at category comparison as opposed to distribution here. And that's what we got there. And so we carry on from then on to class G and class H and class I. So that's the bar graph for the information given to us on here. Now I hope all that made some sense. Next slide. Right, now on this slide, we'll be looking at uh, histogram and frequency polygon. Now in the previous slide, we looked at uh, uh, bar charts, okay? Now in histogram, there are no gaps between the uh the rectangles whereas in the bar chart there are gaps okay now this is what we've got here now this one i've done myself here is not in the original uh data given to us here now what i've done here is to look at the absolute values given to us there okay so we're looking at the uh women population and the male population separately and then for the female for the female population, now in the class interval class A, there are nineteen thousand women there, and that contributes seven point three percent of all the female teachers in England and Wales. So we're not looking at the whole teaching population; we're looking at only the uh, female population. That's what we're looking at here now, because we're going to look at the distribution in the female population. The female teaching population only. Similarly, for this one here, we're looking at the distribution for the uh, male teaching population there, and not the overall teaching population. And with this, we're going to draw a histogram here, because in histogram we're looking at distribution, and for bar charts we're looking at category, category comparison here. So, uh, female teachers and male teachers there. Right. Again, same thing as before, we still got uh, class intervals, the uh, st still the same. Uh, class A is between the lower band of 19.5 and the upper band of 24.5. Uh, for class B, the lower band of 24.5 and upper band of 29.5. And that's what you've got there. Okay, that's from the last slide, that is. Okay, so now moving on. And so this histogram for qualified regular women teachers in public schools. In England right and again we're looking at instead of plotting the absolute values we're looking at relative frequency it's so much easier to do that rather than plotting absolute values there so we should let this column here instead uh, we've got little values and this is our histogram here now notice here that the graph is moving from being high values from the lower end to lower values at the high end there. So we're going, so in effect, this is what's called positive screen. It's, it's skewed to the right hand side. As if we've got the X axis moving from left to right. So it's skewing from left to right. So that's called positive, positive skewing. Okay. So now what you need to do now is this is this is the histogram for uh, women teachers. And notice that the there's no gap between the bars there. Okay, for this, this is this is continue for the start. There are no gaps between the bars at all there. Okay, hope that makes sense. And then moving on there, so we're going to look at the uh, frequency polygon now. There. Now what you do is you find 
for a given uh, in class interval there, you find the midpoints on the bars there. Okay, so the midpoint is there for class A, and the midpoint for class B is there, and the midpoint for class C is there, the midpoint for class D, and so on and so forth. Okay, now you don't need to draw a bar chart, uh, a histogram for this. You can actually find the the midpoint and then find the point, find the frequency. So they give you there. Okay, you don't need to draw a bar graph. If you're asked to find the frequency polygon, all you need to do is to find the midpoint of each class and then find the frequency, in this case 7.3. So you look at the midpoint there and then the frequency 7.3 and you put your point there. Okay, now when you join these points up, as you do there, now that should give you your frequency polygon. Now, in the old days, we used to uh, draw this, uh, extend that to the point there to have a closed polygon. You don't have to do that anymore. That is okay, leaving it as open there. So that is your, th this is your frequency polygon. That's what you got there. Okay. Right, that's frequency polygon. Now, next slide. Right. Now, in this slide, we'll be looking at the uh, uh, estimated mode and estimated median and estimated mean here. And looking at the uh, mode is, is less than equal to the median, uh, is less than equal to the mean uh, for positively skewed distribution here. Now, this is talking A level work here, or begin to talk of A level work there. So don't worry about this. But we're looking at um, how to find the mode and the median and the mean. Yeah, for growth frequency. Okay, now I've got the histogram from the last slide. Oh, that sh there should be years there. That should be years there. I'm sorry about that. Uh, from the last slide, that's the histogram. And again, what I've done here is I've changed this a bit now for the women population. I've got for each in class, class interval, I've got the midpoints there for the first class A, for class B, for class C, and so on for class C, and not to class I there. That's a bit interval there. Okay. Now multiply the midpoint by the, by the relative frequency, and you get these values here. And from that, we should calculate the, uh, the, the estimated mean. Okay. So it's going to be, uh, if you add this, all these values there, you're going to get 3,813. 3, and divided by 100, you should get an estimated mean age of 38.13 years. Okay, and 38.13 years would be in the class interval D there. Okay, right. Now, for the median, if you add 73 plus 21 plus 17.7, you get 46. That's not yet 50. But if you add 12.1, you then exceed um, 50 there. So, if you lined up all the women in, in terms of age, the lady who occupies the central 50th and 58th position would be in class interval uh, D there. So, the mean and the median both occur in the class interval D there. So, the mean is going to be the April 1, 3 years, and the median is going to be somewhere there. But if you look at this figure here, you have 46, that's not too far off from 50. So the median value is going to be somewhere nearer to 34.5, whereas the mean value is nearer somewhere towards the end of 39. Uh, so it would seem to me, purely by speculation, with actually the calculation, that the median value will be less than the, uh, the mean value. And that agrees with what we expect here. Uh. Now, don't forget that in this case, the mode is in the class interval B there. And the class interval B is between 24.5 and 29.5. So the mod is going to be less than the median and less than the mean, as we expect from there, because it is positively skewed. That's a bit of A-level work there. You don't need to know that, but you need to know how to find the mode, uh, the median, and estimated mean. So these are all estimates, estimate of the mode, estimate of the median, and estimate of mean. This is GCSE, IGCSE work. I uh, hope that makes sense. Next slide. Right, now for the uh, male teaching uh, population there. 
Again, we're going to do similar thing as we did for the female teaching population, uh, relative frequency in percentage terms, and also um, the histogram for that. Again, as before, we've got our class interval, again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I there. Again, this is uh, post is skewed again, as we got there. So we want to see if we can estimate the mean, as we do for, for the women, and estimate the median, and estimate the mode as well. Okay, so as before, these are the mid class intervals. And to try and find the mean, we multiply the relative frequency by the midpoints. Okay, that times that, that times that, that times that, that times that. And we get all these values. And when you add them all up, we get our estimated mean to be uh, 3958.8 divided by 100, that gives that 9.6 years. And that is just um about getting to the uh e class there as we shall see so you're just in the e class because because the e class starts from that 9.5 percent so it's 9.5 years at the lower bound to 44.5 years so the estimated mean is just inside the um e class there okay now for the estimated median as before if we add uh, 3.8 to 15.6 to 17.8, we get 37.2, and then add 15.6, it just creeping into the that's 52.8 there. So that is going to be in the D class there. It's very close. See, you're going from there, that's 52.8 there. So it's very it's in the D class there. So the estimated median is in the D class, which is less than uh, the, the mean in the A class. Yeah, so you got D there, there, and you got E there. And of course, the mode is in the uh, C class there. So the mean is the mode is in the C class there. So uh, the mode is less than the median, is less than the mean there, as we expect from the last slide. Uh, for, for, the, for the male teaching population, I've not bothered to do the uh, frequency polygon again if you remember from the uh, female class we did the midpoints the midpoints the midpoints the midpoint midpoint and then join them all together as you can try that yourself hope all that made some sense and uh, now next slide okay now <laughs> if you've been with me so far well done uh, this is the last slide now for now we're looking at the cumulative frequency now don't forget that the beauty of having a, a relative frequency is that it's easier to plot. Okay, so that's our graph there. Okay, and we need to plot the, for each class interval, we're going to plot the upper bound on the year's axis. Okay, for each class interval there. So what you got there is the, is the, are the, are the points for the upper bound for the female teaching population. That's what we got there. Okay. So, in other words, for class H, for instance, uh, we've got the upper bound is 49.5, and that's what you're plotting as you plot that, that against the frequency in that class. That's what we got there. It's for the female population there. And that's the uh, um, cumulative frequency. Uh, column there or on the vertical axis in percentage and that's what you got there so now we're going to compare the community frequency for the women teaching population and the men teaching population there okay so what we've now got is this here again just to remind ourselves what these are so these are the uh, the upper bound for each class interval, 24.5 to 9.5, 34.5, 9.5, and so on, up to 64.5 there for class I. So what we don't have is something like this here. That's for the male, that's the community frequency for the, for the male teaching population. Now, that's a bit different from what you find in, in the exam. In the exam, you find a nice S curve like that. But that's not real life. This is real life here. This is what it is about. Okay. So the blue one is the cumulative frequency chart or graph for the male population, male teaching population. 
and the sort of yellow pinkish one is for the female teaching population okay now we need to use this graph to find the median or the estimated median for both the male and the female population there so looking at the 50th the 50 percentile there okay now you draw from your 50 percent there which is which is again one good thing about using the uh, using the relative frequency and that 50 percent there you 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 draw a line from the 50 percent on the on the y axis until you hit the male population and then down and the same thing again for the female you draw a line for the 50 percent until you hit the uh, female community frequency graph and then down so that now gives us uh, the estimated median for the male teaching population which is not far off from what you got from the bar graph or by calculation and for the female and that's what you got there again not far off from what you got from the calculation itself so that's our median value there okay that's the median value now for the lower quartile which is 25 percent again find 25 percent on your cumulative frequency or relative frequency um, column there or axis draw a horizontal line until you hit the uh, graph for the female there and then you do a similar thing for the male population you draw a horizontal line for 25 percent and up across until you hit the male cumulative frequency graph and then down okay so the lower quartile, estimated lower quartile is going to be somewhere there, okay? And the estimated uh, lower quartile for female is going to be somewhere there again. Again, you can find that by interpolation there. Now for the upper quartile, we're looking at 75%. Again, this is where the uh, relative frequency is very, uh, very good. You don't have to do any calculation, just find 75% and that's what you got there for female and then for male. And then draw a graph down, draw a line down, vertical line down to the years, and that to give us the uh, the upper quarter, estimated upper quarter for the male population, uh, male teaching population that is, and for the lower, upper quarter for the female teaching population is there. Okay, and I do hope all that made some sense. And please, please subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye bye.